This is an Akai television manufactured in October of 2006. It does not have a TV tuner. It is model LCT42Z6TM and a B at the end. This particular model I've um, not used very much. It's 1080p and it's uh, uh, LCD, no LED backlighting. So um, it's been in my use for a short time. I've owned it a long time, but it mostly was just for some presentations and like a board type meeting. And then I let someone borrow it and it started putting some crazy lines on it. So I have right there the red box. That's a Roku box. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on. And as you can see, it starts up. And now we're at the Roku channel. It's on 720. P and it's making a noise. It's probably a little bit hard to hear, but now you can see the screen started doing something strange. Lines going through it. And we'll just hit OK on the Roku. And as you can see, it just starts acting strange. Um, it does different things at different times. There we are back at that. Now this is not a problem with the feed from the Roku. This is definitely a problem with the unit. And it's really acting up right now. <laughs> Before at least you could see a few little things. Um, so you get the idea. There's a problem. I've looked it up on the internet and so we're going to take a look at this problem and see if we can fix it. And hopefully have a working television again. As I said, this didn't get much use. And it sounds like the capacitors in it are bad. It makes a strange hum. So onward and we'll see what we can do to repair this. So here is the back panel with the information on the television. And you can see the model number right there. Okay, there's a lot of screws on this. So we're gonna start removing them and take the back cover off. They're all the way around on the different sides here, all on the outside and then some on the inside here. So we'll remove those and see what's underneath. Okay, that was 28 screws, approximately, I hope, and there may be some more that I didn't see, but we will try to take the top off. I'm going to pull all the screws that are loose right here. They're pretty obvious what's what. So normally I would kind of label these, but they're pretty, uh, pretty darn obvious. This, these guys here are for mounting on the wall. These little ones can't fit anywhere else except for right here. If you need to, just label where they go and you'll be fine. There's a connector right here on the power board and then a ground. So we're going to go ahead and take the ground off. And then the cover comes off. So that's approximately 30 screws. So these are all the screws that came out. There's four of the wall mount ones. There's these small ones that were back um, in the indent where you put the connectors in. These held the stand on and these guys went all the way around the television and a couple other places. There's 17 of those, four, four, four. So I'm, you know, pretty much around 29 screws. Um, there may have been one that slipped away I haven't seen yet, but that seems to be the detail. And then this is the whole unit. This is obviously the power supply. And then that's the main board inside there, which has given us the trouble. Notice all of the glue on the connectors. This must be removed before pulling the connectors out to avoid damage. Make sure you take a picture of the board so you know where all the connectors go when you put it back together. Okay, so there's the board. I took a picture overhead and these connectors 
should, for the most part, just pull out. And I say that, of course, it won't come up. That one, no problem. Fine. Right. Um, they appear to be glued in. <laughs> now that I look harder. We've got little dabs of glue. So that means we're going to somehow have to get that glue off of some of these. In fact, that took the whole connector off. So there's something to be careful of because well, that's not a good thing. All right, so lesson learned. Now this probably can just go right back in and not be a problem. But that connector should have pulled out of the socket instead of the whole socket pulling away from here. So there's a challenge to deal with. Uh, this has got such a huge glob on it. I'm going to have to get something to somehow uh, dislodge it. And this one, I don't see much glue, but it's really stuck in there. Hmm. Okay, we'll be back in a moment. Some of the glue on these connectors was pretty wild. <laughs> So, don't be surprised if you have a hard time taking these off. I would take an X-Acto knife and try to cut the glue off. So, most of the connectors eventually came off. Hopefully, I didn't damage the board. So, be very careful. So, due to all the pushing and prodding of the cables, I put them back in. Um, put a couple of screws to just to hold the television up on the stand. And make sure it is still working and didn't have any problems though if you can, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this in the dark <laughs> except the dark matters lots of buzzing going on in there but for some reason, oop, I was going to say the screen isn't acting up but there we go, acting up so at least we know we're at the same point we were before and my pulling and all that glue I was able to get by it without damaging the board and just to make sure the sound works we're gonna play something on YouTube of importance is nothing <laughs> that stopped the noise the humming that's interesting First, I want to review American but, Sniper Clinic. As you can see, new film because it's bigger than just lots a movie. of video problems. Science of propaganda decoding it. Okay, I'm so we verified the television still works. We're going to pull all these connectors off. This one is, in particular, very difficult. None of these have little latches you can pull on. And I'm glad I took pictures, by the way, because some of these things could fit into others. And you wouldn't want that to happen. So now you'll notice these all come out really easily because the glue's gone. And even the one that I pulled the kind of socket out, they just pushed it back in. I didn't even glue it. It's fine. So we want to take the four screws out of the back of this. So we will do that. Okay. This is missing one already. I started this, so that screw nut comes out for the VGA. We've got not that one, this guy here, which seems to be holding the board in. And now the board comes apart from the unit. That was a lot. So I look at the caps on this board and under first glance I don't really see any bad ones in particular but sometimes it's hard to see and it can be misleading and there's our board number
I bought 10 of these capacitors for 27 cents, including shipping on eBay. Amazing. So while I'm waiting for the capacitors to come in for the main board, I decided to go out and purchase another power supply for the unit just in case, since it was making humming noises and so forth. So I'm going to put this in. It's brand new, has never been used, though of course it's older stock. And we'll see the results and I'll get the main board in place too. You can see all the wires waiting there. So let's check it out. So there's a new power supply that's in place. Now I recommend you do not hook it up this way. There's a lot of exposed wires, things you could touch that are high voltage. So put your cover on. I'm uh, very confident I'm not going to shock myself. But um, you also notice the buzzing went away. So I'm guessing that other power supply was bad to some extent because this one's nice and quiet but we still have the problem with the video so still gotta fix those capacitors on the main board these are the new ones I purchased they're 50 volt but they're the same microamp type things and it cost me 27 cents for 10 of them shipped from China. Now that was an eBay auction I won, so I can't tell you how to repeat that, but that was my expense. Not much. So I'm going to pull those other ones out and we'll see what happens here. So these are pretty easy to identify, the plus and the minus. The minus, which you see in the gray with the little black lines, has the shorter wire compared to the plus. And then you can see here, I picked a 50 volt, um, 100 microfarad. So we're good with this. We're going to put those in. The ones with the pink tops are the ones I'm going to replace. And you should note the positive and negative. You can see as they're marked on these things. Um, and I'm going to flip this board over. So hold on for a moment. And you'll notice they'll put like plus, you know, minus in these things. So you can really see where they, these are the ones that need to be pulled out. So we'll go ahead and pull those out and Put the new ones in. From the service manual, you'll see here the capacitors you need to change. They have the numbers on it. Here are a few pictures of the capacitors on the board. I put the marks on top of the capacitors. The board has the spots labeled such as C301, etc. These are the ones to replace. Okay, I've replaced all of them. You can see two of the leads are still sticking out that I just need to take some nippy cutters and cut them down to the bottom. There's the ones I cut out, and there's an example of the ones I put in, just for size-wise. So we're going to cut those right at the base with our handy-handy little nippy cutters here. Oops, sorry. There are little nippy cutters right there. We're going to cut that to the base, and we'll be ready to go. Just a quick review on the capacitors I took out and the replacement ones that are being put in. And the ones I replaced, I just put a little green on top of them. Now just go through and double check and make sure you have all these negatives and positives correct because you'll notice the one on the right is reversed, the positive is towards us. The three on the left, the negatives are towards us and the one over here, the negative is off to the side. So make sure you do that right. Okay, so I have the board back in just with a few screws. Um, I happened to buy a new remote for this television because Mine's lost somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and see how it works. I've got my Roku hooked up to it. We'll go over to uh, Netflix here. Hold on. Okay, let's make sure we have some volume on this thing. Good, that remote works. And we'll just pick something. Um, just pick something like torch wood. Torch wood. Outside the government, beyond the police. Okay. Well, that looks good. No strange signals. Now, we'll, of course, we'll let this burn in for a couple of hours. And I'll get back. But so far, I would say we are doing extremely well with this. Um, worked first time. And it was the five pieces that 
were referenced in the... So anyway, we're going to go ahead and now pick a YouTube. And we'll just see what we have here for some pickings. Here we'll pick a Gerald Salenti. So yeah, we're doing good. So we're just going to give it some some uh, tries and see what happens here. Should be fine. One week later and everything is still working fine. Problem solved. Love it for 27 cents.